When you think of the biggest heist in history, the Gardner Museum might come to mind, where thieves disguised as cops stole masterpieces by Rembrandt and Dega, worth millions. Or maybe it's Bernie Madoff, who fleeced investors out of $65 billion. But there's an international heist that makes the rest look like child's play, one you haven't even heard of. It's an ongoing scheme, one that's stolen hundreds of billions of dollars from innocent people. The thieves do it using techniques with names like the double Irish, or sometimes even a double Irish with a Dutch sandwich, and one of the prime culprits, none other than Apple Inc. Here's how they pull it off. Apple is one of the most successful and iconic brands in history, and for years it's been massively profitable. Between 2008 and 2015, as countries across the globe faced economic chaos and debt defaults, and governments slashed their public safety nets and services, Apple made roughly $305.7 billion in pre-tax profits. In theory, those profits should have been subject to substantial corporate taxes in the US and abroad. They should have helped pay for social welfare programs at a time when they were sorely needed. But Apple wasn't about to give up its bounty easily. Early on, Apple found an esoteric loophole to minimize its tax bill. First, they moved to Ireland. Kind of. Not really. It's complicated. Let's rewind. Some context might help. In the modern global economy, huge corporations, many of them based in America, make billions in profits overseas. That's great news for a handful of CEOs and shareholders, but for global governments, it poses a huge challenge. When it comes to sprawling multinationals with dozens of foreign subsidiaries, who has the right to tax their income and at what rate? We never did come up with a global answer, so governments instead focused on protecting their own interests, triggering a race to the bottom where countries set their corporate tax rates lower and lower to compete for business. Meanwhile, corporations like Apple became experts in exploiting the gaps in international tax law. So, back to Ireland. In the 1980s, Apple set up several subsidiary companies in Ireland, in theory, to help sell its products in Europe. In fact, the subsidiaries were created to be receptacles for Apple's profits worldwide. Profits that could be concealed from governments almost entirely. Now, you might be wondering why Apple chose Ireland, of all possible places. Why avoid reporting profits in one place just to report them somewhere else? The answer is simple. They didn't report them anywhere else. They didn't have to. Because Ireland lets corporations use it as a tax haven. The scheme is called the Double Irish. Double Irish. Because it requires companies set up two Irish subsidiaries. Apple puts its intellectual property in an Irish registered company. That company is then controlled by yet another Irish registered company that has tax residency in a country with an even lower tax rate. For example, Bermuda. To the US, it looks like any profits are being taxed in Ireland, but to Ireland, it looks like the profits are taxed in Bermuda. In fact, Apple's profits were, for tax purposes, in no man's land. For instance, one Apple subsidiary in Ireland paid no corporate income tax to any nation on $30 billion of income over five years. The company had no owner other than Apple, no physical presence at any address, and never had a single employee during 30 years of existence. These schemes became so popular, they inspired spin-offs, such as the Double Irish with a Dutch sandwich. Double Irish with a Dutch sandwich. But governments caught on. A 2013 Senate hearing shed some light on the dark truth behind Apple's fortune. We not only comply with the laws, but we comply with the spirit of the laws. We don't depend on tax gimmicks. We don't stash money on some Caribbean island. Apple faced massive pressure to repatriate its profits to the US and pay its fair share of taxes. Ireland was soon forced to eliminate the double Irish, with European regulators frustrated by losing billions in revenue. Government authorities and citizens alike were demanding justice. And so Apple gave in. It remained an extremely valuable corporation with billions in cash flow while paying its full tax bill. No tricks or evasion involved. Just kidding. It did not. 
it still hasn't. That's the thing about loopholes. When it comes to taxing multinational corporations, closing them can feel like playing a very expensive version of whack-a-mole. Apple found a new loophole to exploit. With the assistance of expensive lawyers, Apple moved a subsidiary to the Isle of Jersey off the coast of France, and over $230 billion remained outside tax agencies' grasp. They knew what they were doing, and they knew how the world would react. Leaked emails from the Paradise Papers show how Apple's lawyers hunted for a tax haven, all while emphasizing their client was extremely sensitive concerning publicity and expected the work that is being done for them only to be discussed amongst personnel who need to know. Of course, Apple isn't alone in its use of complex legal maneuvers to evade paying taxes. Most of America's largest corporations maintain subsidiaries in offshore tax havens, dodging an estimated $90 billion every year in income taxes. We just can't fix this loophole by loophole. As soon as we patch one up, overpriced corporate lawyers will come up with a new scheme to exploit another. But we can do something about the root cause. One way to do this is to pass a global minimum tax. Global minimum tax. An agreement on a GMT could finally answer the questions governments have been kicking the can down the road on since the 1980s. And it could form a common united front against corporate evasion and abuse. There's real momentum for this. In 2021, 130 countries, including the US, agreed to a blueprint for a global minimum tax of 15%. Treasury Secretary Yellen and President Biden have named passing this tax in the US as a key priority to raise revenue and pay for public goods like infrastructure. A global minimum tax of 15%. I'm gonna move on this at home as well. Minimum tax for corporations to pay for the profits they make anywhere in the world. Governments could still set their own domestic corporate tax rates, but if multinational companies pay lower rates in a particular country, their home governments could top up their taxes to the minimum rate. A tax like this would allow the US to say, you can register your corporate mailboxes to Ireland, Bermuda, or the moon, but your profits are going to be taxed the same. The US needs to raise corporate tax rates and close loopholes to make sure companies like Apple pay their fair share regardless of where they are based. It will take both global minimum tax and strong domestic corporate tax reform to end the greatest heist of all time, once and for all.